Let's take Mr. Obama. He's very bright, good looking, and tall. Exactly what we'd expect of a highly outbred individual. Kenya and Kansas. That means he's highly heterozygous inside. It's likely that at any given locus, he's going to have different genes. And that is well known to give you what's called hybrid vigor. When the mother and the father are that far apart geographically, then it's very likely their genes will differ uh, as you go down the genotype. Because remember, you, the progeny, you get one set of chromosomes from Kansas mom and one set of chromosomes from Kenyan dad. And so you go down the paired chromosomes and you say, is it the same gene or is it different? Well, if they're from Kenya and Kansas, they're more likely to be different than if the two parents were from Kansas or if the two parents were from Kenya. And so uh, being highly heterozygous, which means having lots of differences between your parental chromosomes, is known to be advantageous in an endless number of species and in certain very well-known ways. So the term hybrid vigor is well known for breeding animals and even breeding crops and so on. Hybrid corn is that much stronger than inbred corn and so on. Obama shows the typical traits of hybrid vigor. Taller, good looking, you know, crosses between different racial groups and so on, they tend to be better looking and smarter. All of which he, all of which he is. Hey now, so what do you think? Is President Obama a superior individual due to his genomic diversity? Does the very discussion sound uncomfortably close to 19th century eugenics? And if so, what does it matter? It's only science. Would love to know your thoughts. Please leave them below. If you like this video, like this video. And please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. But whatever you do, don't forget to science the day.